Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers, from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today's subject, Agitation, Part 2. From Mother's Prayers and Meditations. January 2nd, 1914. This marvelous silence manifests thee, in spite of the folly of human agitation. The immutable and constant silence, so living in everything that one has only to listen in order to hear it, in opposition to all that is futile noise, vain agitation, useless dispersion of energies. Let it flower in our being as a generator of light and peace, and let its power radiate on all in beneficent waves. Thou art the Savior of all life, and the reason of all activity, the goal of our thoughts. Mother, whether the thing to be done takes a thousand years or only a year, according to the human computation, does not matter at all if you are one with the Divine Consciousness. For then you leave outside you the things of the human nature and you enter into the infinity and eternity of the divine nature. Then you escape from this feeling of a great eagerness of hurry with which men are obsessed because they want to see things done, agitation, haste, Restlessness lead nowhere. It is foam on the sea. It is a great fuss that stops with itself. Men have a feeling that if they are not all the time running about and bursting into fits of feverish activity, they are doing nothing. It is an illusion to think that all these so-called movements change things. It is merely taking a cup and beating the water in it. The water is moved about, but it is not changed for all your beating. This illusion of action is one of the greatest illusions of human nature. It hurts progress because it brings on you the necessity of rushing always into some excited movement. If you could only perceive the illusion and see how useless it all is, how it changes nothing. Nowhere can you achieve anything by it. Those who are thus rushing about are the tools of forces that make them dance for their own amusement. And they are not forces of the best quality either. Once you step back from these whirling forces into quiet regions, you see how great is the illusion. Humanity appears to you like a mass of blind creatures rushing about without knowing what they do or why they do it, and only knocking and stumbling against each other. And it is this that they call action and life. It is empty agitation, not action, 
not true life. Question to Mother. I have been rather unwell for the last three or four days. Diarrhea and vomiting are the symptoms. Generally this happens when my mind is upset, but this time it is not so. I did not eat for three days and I was all right. Yesterday I took some food and again the problem has started. The real reason must be somewhere else. Mother, it is due to restlessness and agitation. What is the matter? Bring down peace, the divine peace in your stomach, and it will be all right. Love and blessings. 2nd December 1967 The imperative condition for cure is calm and quietness. Any agitation, any nervousness prolongs the illness. 26 November 1969 I have seen people, many, who cannot keep quiet for half an hour seated without fidgeting. They must move a leg, or move a foot, or an arm, or the head. All the time they must be restless, because they have not the power or the force to remain quiet. This capacity to remain still when you want to gather all your energy and spend it as you like, wholly as you like, or to dose it as you like in action with a perfect calm, even in action. That is always the sign of force. It can be physical force. It can be vital force. It can be mental force. But if you are in the least agitated, you may be sure that there is somewhere a weakness. And if your agitation is integral, the weakness also is integral. I knew some poets who used to say, It is my enemy's hatred which makes me value the affection of my friends. And it is the almost inevitable likelihood of misfortune which gives all its savor to happiness and so on. And they value repose only in contrast with the daily agitation. Silence only because of the unusual noise. And some of them even tell you, oh, it is because there are illnesses that good health is cherished. It goes so far that a thing is valued only when it is lost. And, as Sri Aurobindo says here, when this fever of action, of movement, this agitation of creative thought is not there, one feels one is falling into inertia. Most people fear silence calm, quietude. They no longer feel alive when they are not agitated. Namaste.